Stanley no. Tucci. Look at that. Does that not just say searching for Stanley Tucci? Look at Stanley right there on our Zoom. <laughs> searching for Stanley Tucci. How are you, Stanley? Good. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Uh, so Stanley's coming to us from London, and we have been talking about your show here for quite a while because uh, it's my sole passion is to um, be in Italy and taste the local food from the local regions and hear the stories behind that. And also just the pride that people take in the food and in the history must be one of the coolest things to experience in person. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's unlike any other place, the importance I think that's put on, on food. Uh, and, you know, practices have changed over the years, some not for the better. Um, and yet at the same time, for the most part, Italy retains a lot of its uh, sort of agricultural uh, purity. Yeah, I actually love it when I have been in an Italian restaurant in Italy and my father, who is not a purist, right? It's a bit, he can get cranky. I don't know. He's not, I don't know. He's not a purist. He can get a bit cranky. And so he thinks that Parmesan should go on everything. And no. so, uh, exactly. So no. I'm there. I mean, my father's like, these chefs have come out and almost kicked him out of the restaurant because he's like, <laughs> what do you mean I can't have cheese on my pasta? I can't have cheese on my veal. I'm like, dad, it's like an integrity thing. Don't get into an argument with the chef. You can't have Parmesan on everything, you know, because there's so much pride and the way you're supposed to yeah. eat it. Um, now, I know chefs who have actually thrown people out of their restaurants because yeah. wow. they asked for certain things that they, and they said, no, I'm sorry. They're like, well, the customer's always right. No, and they said, no, no, actually not in our restaurant. No, no, not in our, no, not in our okay. establishment. I'm right. I'm the that's, chef. I'm right. That's for sure. A couple little th simple things. Milano, Milan, yeah. pasta. They don't eat, generally, they don't serve pasta. No, no, it's, it's, um, you'll, you'll get a little bit of pasta every now and again, but you're mostly going to get more meat, meat. You're going to get polenta and rice. Mm, polenta. And, risotto. Risotto. And meatballs not supposed to be put on top of pasta. No, no. No, no. Never, as they no, say. No, no. No, no. Yeah. No, never. No, no. If I, I mean... when my parents, you know, would make, they made the most delicious meatballs. They were incredibly light. And but when you serve them, they were served separately. You never ever ate never them. them on on, no, never. No. Now if I tried to you. do it, like when I was yeah. a kid, my mother would just. <laughs> she put you in your room. Where, what it, part? Of, where, what's your Italian history? Where did your family come from? Uh, my family comes from Calabria, which is the toe of the boot. Right? Yeah. So uh, very very poor. Still is very poor. Um, but at the time, so my grandparents came over at the turn of the last century um, because there was so much poverty there. Well, right. my, one one came over, turn, yeah, basically, yeah, but between um, just before and just after World War One. And Stanley, I'm curious, just sort of on the production side of it, we see some pre-pandemic, some post-pandemic. How much did you get done before you had to work around a lot of restrictions? Yeah, we, what we did was we we actually shot four. We we weren't quite sure how many we were going to do, uh, and of course it was up to CNN to sort of. They looked at the first four, and those were all done prior to the pandemic, and then they said, "Okay, we'd like to do a couple more." So, the, but by then, the pandemic had occurred, so we had to wait a while when there was an opening, and then there was this opening, but obviously you know you still had to follow certain protocols and then of course we finished just before everything started to lock shut down yeah. and yeah. are you hearing that things are getting better there are they are they turning the tide yes i think things are getting better yeah i have a friend who some friends who are there and you know you're able to go out to restaurants you're able to eat outside i think you're you're able to eat inside too listen um i'm fanatic about it i sent him an I email know, saying i know you are i know I you may, are I am a fanatic about all of it. I, I told Stanley that my dream is to set up a, a beautiful spot there and make wine and olive oil. I mean, this is, this is my, my, my retirement project is set. Mm -hmm. So I will be sending you all gifts for the holidays when I'm gone. Um, and, 
And Stanley, you know, I just want to point it out because it, we, we cannot have this conversation without the world knowing. What, a lot of people reviewed this show. I mean, Stanley Tucci coming on CNN, was he doing news? No, he's searching for Italy. Mm-hmm. And one review called you a sex symbol and a charming mm-hmm. host. Really? And I just, I just want to say, mm-hmm. that is absolutely on. Hit the nail on the right, <laughs> right there. I mean, nailed it. Did you know that? You are now, you become, maybe you've been, but you're becoming a global sex symbol now. A global sex symbol. Yes, I know. It means that, <clears throat> that people are desperate. And, <laughs> no. and, they need, and they need to get out more. And once they do, I think that moniker will change. It will all change. Uh, Stanley also starring in Supernova along the amazingly talented Colin Firth. Yeah. And, well, tell me about this. Well, this is a really beautiful movie. This guy sent this movie. Uh, Harry McQueen sent me this script o- almost two years ago now. It's absolutely beautiful about a same-sex uh, couple, and one of them is suffering from early-onset dementia. And as soon as I read it, um, I thought that Colin, Colin and I have been friends for a long time, and I thought that he would be the perfect person to play it. Um, we went to Colin talked to him. I slipped him the script unbeknownst to Harry. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, long story short, we got the money for it. It was only made for about three million pounds or something uh, in the Lake District. It was a really, really beautiful part of um, England. And um, it it was a wonderful experience. And and the reviews for the film have been fantastic. And it's just, it was, you know, it's one of those movies you do that you're really happy to be in. Because mm. sometimes you make them and you're not so happy to be in them. A hundred percent. I think we've yeah. all been there. Uh, not in the movie business, but in some project. Uh, Supernova is now in theaters and available on demand. All right. Well, listen, Stanley, you have got to go search for Italy. So thank you for coming on with us. We really appreciate it. And uh, you're always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ryan. All right, pal. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you.